I saw something and it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's kind of exciting. I kind of wanted to look at it. I kind of wanted to talk about it. Randall will rub you the right way. Shut up. Okay, Randall. You know what, Randall? You're being turned off for a second, okay, buddy? Tired of you, Randall. All right, so I saw this right here that OpenAI is going to be like buying Windsurf. So I figured we'd talk about like why, why would they buy this? Like what kind of advantages does this? What does this mean for Windsurf? And what? What kind of makes this a bit hypocritical for OpenAI to do this? And I thought it'd be fun. Okay, so as far as like, why did OpenAI buy this? At least in my head, why did OpenAI buy this? I think it's fairly simple. It's fairly obvious, at least. Windsurf is just like another one of these type editors that leaned in a bit more to the agentic side as that new hip word that doesn't mean anything uh, has been created for us to say now, agentic. We all got to say that really annoying thing. But anyways... Effectively, what Windsurf allows you to do is it zeroes to 60 as fast as possible and really tries to lean into the vibe style coding, much like less so than Cursor, right? It's all about that agentic moves. And so OpenAI purchased Windsurf. Okay, very, very neat. But why would they... Why would they purchase Windsurf? Here's my kind of like the, the reason why is that right now what ends up happening is there is this big gigantic hole for OpenAI. They have something called ChatGPT. And inside of ChatGPT, they get these questions like, hey, how do I make this? Or how do I do that? And they give you some code. And then after that, somebody copies and pastes this, puts it into their editor, and then morphs it into what they actually want. Now... There's two big advantages for OpenAI to be able to actually own this, which is that one, you get to know that when you get prompt X, how does it get changed to like output Y? You get to actually use this as training data. Yes, again, data, it's always been king. It's always, always been king. I really do think that this is a huge move for uh, owning more and more data, more and more training, because at the end of the day, that is what they need. All these GitHub profiles being filled with just auto-generated code, not that great for training, but instead being able to see what you outputted and why it should be changed is probably going to be really great training data to be able to stay competitive because they need to stay competitive with Anthropic, with Gemini, with whoever else is producing a bunch of this stuff. But second off, another thing that I think about is that OpenAI exists and they produce all this output and then they go and sell for a fraction of the cost to these larger bulk buyers who then redistribute and sell out chat jippity, right? That is, I mean, in, a, in essence, any AI wrapper is just a bulk buy and you're using someone else's account to use ChatGPT. That's all it is, right? And so they are making pennies on when they could be making dollars, right? They get more access to making money. They can capture that entire cost. So I do think there is some money angle to this, but my assumption is that the big angle is going to be the data. And so what does this mean for Windsurf? Well, Windsurf, one of its big things that it, it operates on is that it allows any model to be used. It's supposed to be this model agnostic approach. And I think that it's going to remain that way for a while, but it's kind of ignorant or dumb to think that OpenAI is going to be just going, oh yeah, we'll just let all these models exist. Like they want money. They do things for the monies. They don't like their current structure, it being a nonprofit. They kind of want the monies, right? Uh, instead of having middlemen and all this, they want to create their own. They get to use all this data to make it better and better and better. And then finally, I can't imagine a world where they don't slowly start clamping down on having all these other models or these reduced modes, or they'll have this improved windsurf specific mode open only for open AI, which means that you're going to be wanting to use this more, the improved model. You know what I mean? Because it'd be really silly for you to use something that's not as well integrated as it would be the really hyper integrated open AI one. That's much, much better. So that's kind of what I kind of foresee for these two things. And I think there's like this article that I was reading right here. There's a bit of copium down at the bottom, which says, we'll see. But I, for one, highly doubt, given Windsurf's business has succeeded in some part because of flexibility of its tools offering, it would also likely raise complaints of anti-competitive business measures and could even lead to some potential lawsuits. This is, of course, talking about OpenAI removing outside models. First off, it's not going to, there's no anti-competitive lawsuits or anything like that. Windsurf represents like 0.01% of the editor market. If they dropped every single model support and only used OpenAI, what are you going to do? Sue them for having a monopoly over zero users? 
Like that's not there's there's that doesn't even exist. That's not even a thing. That's not you. You can't even do that. Okay, you're just gonna you're just gonna disenfranchise the people that are currently existing there right now. So I'm not worried about any of those things. Um, but I do think that there's something really hilarious about this entire aspect right here, which is a big part of open AI. They keep doing this thing where they're like, hey, we got a top 50 coder. And you're like, wow, you got a programmer that's the top 50 in the world? And they're like, yeah, our AI is so good, it's top 50. And you're like, what does that mean? And they're like, hacker rank or whatever whatever the thing is that they're saying that they're top 50 at. They're like, oh, our models are so good. They're the top of the top of the cream of the crop of programmers. Why aren't you just building your own fork then, right? Why spend billions of dollars building your own fork? You got top 50 programmers. What the heck, dog? You got top 50 programmers and it scales. So why aren't you doing that? I'm not a math magician, but one would assume if you have full access to the underlying technology, you have all the ability to do this with a top 50 PhD level super intelligence. Why make as opposed to acquire. My only two strong reasons I have is one, acquiring means you get users. So maybe that's what they're really purchasing is they're not purchasing the talent to create it. They're purchasing the ability to get to have those users day one. So that's that's theory number one. Or number two, my personal theory, which is that the models, despite being top 50 in a meaningless competition, are actually not capable of producing that software without a bunch of time and effort being put into it. So they would need to hire tens, if not a hundred software engineers to be able to get this up as fast as possible. And so therefore they can't do that even with full access to the underlying technology and an open source thing that they could just fork and start running themselves. So instead they just simply aqua hired into the expertise and an already finished product and also have the users so they can start collecting data. So ultimately they can stay competitive in the model world because they're realizing that they can't just simply keep on making bigger and bigger models to make everything so much more better that they're actually hitting these, these problems where things aren't getting as good as they, you know, as fast as we were told. And so the only possible way is to make better and better predictions. And the best way to make better, better in predictions is to see what you predicted based off your pre-trained data against reality and then adjust to that error gradient. Boom. That's my thought about this whole thing. And I think that that's probably at least what I think is the accurate way to think about it. The only way they're going to get tons better is by gaining your data and knowing how you use their stuff. There you go. That's it. I'm the one coping. What am I coping on? We're not coping on anything. This is me just realizing it's a, it's a sweet, sweet ass data play. And if they want to make their models better, they got to have better data. There's no copium there. That's just realization of that's just reality. You know, when you first trained chat GPT, chat Gippity, you had unaltered pure human data out there now it's just ai slop everywhere on github and getting real handcrafted good solid signal for what you thought versus what should be is like the golden the holy grail of training data right come on you should know how this stuff works by now anyways um am i going to use windsurf I, I don't have any current plans on using windsurf though at some point i should probably just check it out to see how good it is I, I mean, gen, my general take is that I don't really like AI programming. I think it just produces such... I just don't like having to learn what someone else did and then alter it to actually work. I find that workflow to be very jarring and kind of confusing for me because it's like I could be in the zone and really know everything from A to Z, or I can inherit a whole bunch of changes, have to understand the changes, and then attempt to integrate them into the system. I just find that I find that experience to be really um it's just not fun. I'm not loving that experience. I'm sure one day I'm sure one day it'll be fantastic. It's just not that day for me right now, right? It's just not that day. Okay, I don't like reading code. Just complete honest thoughts. I don't like reading someone else's code. I don't find that to be an enjoyable experience. I don't like doing code reviews. I will do them and do them to the best of my ability, but it's just like not a fun experience. I've never enjoyed it. So that's why I've never enjoyed this whole like agent producing stuff because it's I'm just doing code reviews and then having to figure out why they did something to make it into the thing I need. And I just find that like it's just it's just not fun. And I program because I like programming and I like to build something because I like building something. Right? I don't want to review for 
four out of the six hours I get a program in a day. That would just feel absolutely soul crushing for me. Anyways, I'll still try windsurf though. Okay, I can't do it. You know, I tried. I tried a vibe code, and every time I vibe code, I'm not sure if it's a control issue. So you know, someone leaving me as a kid, and now I have this control issue where I need to control the world. Some Freudian deep dive psychoanalytics. I just can't let go. I try. I try so hard, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. I am going to be the greatest vibe coder of all time.